so welcome to the kansky lecture series eyelid part 12 and in this part we are going to discuss about the miscellaneous acquired disorders so one is the varix so varices mean the vascular lesions that develop on the eyelids an eyelid varix plural varices is a common lesion that may be mistaken for a nevus or hemangioma. A varix is commonly an isolated lesion but may be associated with orbital involvement. It appears as a dark red or purple, purple subcutaneous compressible unless thrombose lesion which in some cases become apparent only with a Valsalva maneuver. It is clinically and histologically similar to lymphangioma. Simple excision may be uh, performed for diagnostic or cosmetic reason. The possibility of the orbital communication can be borne, should be borne in mind during surgery. So this is the ice eyelid varices and it is showing the dilated vascular channel. Typically appear, appearance of a commonly seen small varix. B is showing a larger lesion probably with the orbital uh, involvement before Valsalva maneuver and during Valsalva. So basically the vascular lesion that uh, is um, uh, increased with the Valsalva maneuver uh, with the straining. So in this uh, lesion you can say when the patient do Valsalva maneuver uh, the um, uh, lesion uh, increases in size. Dermatocalasis, this is described in the discussion of the pseudotosis and in the upper lip blepharoplasty. So basically it is a, a skin that is overhanging the eyelids. It, it is the excessive skin. It is an age related procedure. Floppy eyelid syndrome. Introduction, floppy eyelid syndrome is an uncommon unilateral or bilateral condition that is often overlooked as a cause of a persistent ocular uh, symptom surface symptom so it can be uni, uh, unilateral it can be bilateral it typically affects obese male aged and older men with who sleep with one or both eyelids open against a pillow which result in the lid pulling away from the globe so basically uh, the floppy eyelid skin is basically there is an excessive skin which causes causes the pulling of the skin away from the globe and uh, it is usually occur in the obese male and it is usually uh, associated with the sleep apnea. Consequent nocturnal exposure and poor contact with the globe often exacerbated by the other ocular surface disease such as dry eye and blepharitis result in chronic keratoconjunctivitis. Obstructed sleep apnea is strongly associated and is linked to significant morbidity including cardiopulmonary disease and subtle but irreversible mental dysfunction. Diagnosis. The upper eyelid is typically extremely lax, often with a substantial excess loose upper lid skin. So the upper lid is extremely lax and loose and uh, the tarsal plate has a rubbery consistency. The lid is very easy to avoid to fold and to pull away from the eye. So you can see the figure and then you will understand what I'm talking about when you um, uh, do the uh, uh, eyelid away you can see all the uh, um, you can see the entire conjunctiva into it so uh, it is very uh, lax skin in the upper lid and uh, it is very easily averted floppy eyelid syndrome a is showing the redundant upper lid skin b is showing loose and rubbery tarsal plates and c very easily averted eyelid d is showing the superior tarsal papillary conjunctivitis Papillary conjunctivitis of the two superior tarsal conjunctiva may be intense. Keratopathy, punctate keratopathy, filamentary keratopathy and superior uh, su uh, superficial vascularization may be present. It is maybe secondary to the dry eye which is causing these kinds of symptoms. Other findings may include eyelash ptosis, lacrimal gland prolapse, Ectropion aponeurotic ptosis, patient with bone of the floppy eyelid syndrome and obstructive sleep apnea are at greater risk of developing glaucoma. So it is well also uh, important. Glaucoma is also common in the floppy eyelid syndrome. 
Investigations for the obstructed sleep apnea should be considered in most cases of the floppy eyelid syndrome, particularly if the patient reports substantial snoring and or excessive daytime sleepiness. Treatment of associated uh, obstructive sleep apnea is likely to be of benefit and overweight patients should be encouraged to lose weight. So these are some kinds of the uh, conservative and uh, general treatment. Mild cases may respond to the lubrication together with nocturnal eye shield wear to, or taping of the lids. Moderate to severe cases require horizontal shortening to stabilize the lid and ocular surface and prevent nocturnal lack of thalmos. A pentagonal excision of 10 mm or more is taken from the junction of the lateral third and medial third, two third of the uh, upper lid. So whenever there is a uh, excessive skin or a uh, horizontal um, lid laxity, one can do the pentagon excision to remove the excessive skin and conjunctiva and causing the tightening of the lid. Blepharoclasis. Blepharoclasis is an uncommon condition characterized by the recurrent episodes of the painless non-pitting edema of both upper lids that usually resolves spontaneously after a few days. Presentation is usually around puberty. Episodes become less frequent with time. So these are the uh, basically, blepharoclasis is the non-pitting edema that occurs on the eyelid, uh, both of the upper lid, and it occurs around puberty. Eyelid skin may uh, become stretched and atrophic, characteristically said to resemble the wrinkle secret paper. Severe cases may give rise to stretching of the uh, canthal tendon and levator aporosis, resulting in ptosis. So uh, whenever there is a, a severe uh, cases, it can lead to the stretching and it can cause to the ptosis. A lacrimal gland prolapse may occur. A hypertrophic form with orbital fat herniation and a trophic form with absorption of the orbital fat has been described. So there are two uh, types that ha uh, have been described. One is a hypertrophic form hypertrophic and another is atrophic so with atroph hypertrophic orbital fat is herniated whereas uh, atrophic form the absorption uh, uh, there will be the absorption of the orbital fat the differential diagnosis includes similarly episodic condition particularly drug induced urticaria and angioedema treatment involves the blepharoplasty for the redundant upper lid skin and correction of ptosis Eyelid imbrication syndrome. So, eyelid imbrication syndrome is when the one eye lid uh, crosses the other eye. So, this is called the uh, eyelid imbrication syndrome. Eyelid imbrication syndrome is an uncommon and frequently unrecognized disorder in which the upper lid overlaps the lower uh, on closure so that the lower lashes irritates the uh, superior marginal tarsal conjunctiva. So, the uh, lower lid eyelashes will irritate the upper lid tarsal conjunctiva. It may be unilateral or bilateral and the major symptoms is ocular irritation. It can be required commonly associated with uh, for, uh, floppy eyelid syndrome or very rarely with the con may can be congenital. Occasionally, it may uh, fo follow lower lid uh, tarsal strip surgery. So sometimes it is associated with the tarsal strip surgery as well. Associated signs include superior tarsal papillary conjunctivitis and rose bengal staining of the superior marginal conjunctiva. Definitive treatment consists of the upper lid pentagonic resection or lateral canthal tightening. So whenever there is a very lax skin, you can do the pentagon resection. Upper lid retraction. Upper lid retraction is suspected when the upper lid margin is either level with or above the superior limbus. The causes are listed in table 2.5 uh, and selected examples are illustrated where there are there is no loss or tightness of the upper eyelid skin. Retraction is corrected by the surgical release of the eyelid retractor usually via the transconjunctival posterior approach. Mild retraction can be treated uh, with the Muller muscle recession. So one thing important remember here is a word recession. So recession will induce ptosis. Moderate to severe retraction may require a better aponeurosis recession. So basically uh, the you know that uh, the upper eyelid rest about two millimeter uh, 
अब ऑलमोस्ट टू मिलीमीटर बिलो द सुपीरियर लिम्बस एंड वेन एंड इट इज़ लेवल विद और अब द सुपीरियर लिम्बस इट इज़ कॉल्ड द आईलेट रिट्रैक्शन एंड कॉजेज आर लिस्टेड हेयर सो नंबर वन मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉज इज द थाइराइड आई डिजीज वेरी कॉमन न्यूरोजेनिक कॉजेज कंसिस्ट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रोलेट्रल यूनिलेट्रल टोसिस अनोपोज एलिवेटेड एक्शन ड्यू टू फेशियल पालसी सो वेन एवर अदर आईज हैविंग टोसिस वन नॉर्मल आई कैन ऑल्सो गेट रिट्रैक्टेड थर्ड नर्व मिस डायरेक्शन मार्कस कन जॉ विंकिंग सिंड्रोम कोलिया साइन ऑफ द डॉसल मिड ब्रेन पेरीनोट सिंड्रोम इन्फेंटाइल हाइड्रोसेफलस सेटिंग सन साइन पार्किसोनिज्म एंड सिंपथोम आइमेटिक ड्रॉप सो बेसिकली यू हैव टू जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस थिंग्स मैकेनिकल सर्जिकल ओवर करेक्शन ऑफ टोसेस कैन लीड टू द लिड रिट्रैक्शन स्कारिंग ऑफ द अपर लिड स्किन कैन ऑल्सो लीड टू लिड रिट्रैक्शन कंडेंटल्स कैन बी आइसोलेटेड टू एन ए रिट्रैक्शन सिंड्रोम टाउन सिंड्रोम ट्रांजेंट आई पॉपिंग रिफ्लेक्स इन नॉर्मल इफेक्ट इन फैंस मिसिलेनियस प्रोमिनेंट ग्लो सूडो लिड रिट्रैक्शन सवेर लिवर डिजीज समर स्किल साइन एंड एडियोपैथिक so 2. Points, uh, figure 2.74 is showing the blepharochylosis there is a left aponeurotic ptosis and a thin upper lid skin and 2.75 is showing the lid retraction in this in the thyroid disease following the molar muscle recession it was all, almost gone to the normal lower lid retraction inferior scleral show may be physiological in patients with large eyes or shallow orbit but is commonly involutional or secondary to some of the conditions it may follow lower lid blepharoplasty when aggressive upper massage of the um uh, lid uh, for 2 to 3 month may be curative for minor degrees in other cases a tarsal strip operation may raise the lid slightly but when moderate elevation is uh, required inferior rectal recession with the posterior lamellar spacer is likely to be necessary more aggressive procedures have been described for severe cases so lower lid retraction uh, retraction mean that usually the lower lid is present almost at the level of the lower, uh, inferior limbus so when it uh, ever it is below that it is known as a lower lid retraction for mild cases can be treated with um, massage uh, in other cases uh, we can do tarsal strip procedure uh, for the tightening and in some cases inferior rectus retractor recession and with the posterior lamellar spacer can also be used so now we have cosmetic eyelid and pre periauricular surgery so basically these um this is a topic which is just touching the basics it is not very a deep down to- topic uh and i think it is a deficient topic in this here involutional changes involutional age related changes around the eyes can lead to functional and cosmetic concern that may require treatment so it is for the like if whenever you get aging you know that there can be wrinkling there can be dehiscence and weakness of the muscles and retraction tears so it can cause the changes reduction in the cutaneous elasticity and thickness result in loose wrinkled skin so one of the very common signs of aging is the wrinkled skin weakening of the orbital septum may lead to the orbital fat prolapse so if the orbital septum is weakened there can be the orbital fat prolapse thinning and stretching of the canthal tendons levator aponeurosis and lower lid retractors may cause eyelid laxity and ptosis atrophy of the orbital and eyebrow fat pad can cause anophthalmos and eyebrow sagging weakening of the frontalis muscle and epicranial aponeurosis may cause descent of the eyebrows and increase looseness of the upper eyelid skin so whenever the frontalis skin is muscle is loose it will cause the increase in the uh, upper eyelid skin thinning and stretching of the mid facial support leads to descent with the formation of a tear through depression and exacerbation of the lower eyelid changes thinning and resorption of the periorbital bone exacerbate the appearance of the surplus overlying tissue so eh, these are just the age related changes that may occur in eyes with time non surgical uh, techniques 
नॉन सर्जिकल टेक्निक्स आर पॉस्टिजम टॉक्सिन इंजेक्शन टू द पेरी ऑरिकुलर मसल्स पॉस्टिजम टॉक्सिन इंजेक्शन कैन यूज कैन बी यूज टू रिड्यूस रिंकलिंग पर्टिकुलरली फॉर क्रो फीट एट द लिटरल कैंथस एंड फॉर द ग्लैबुलर फ्रो लाइन्स एंड ब्रो लिफ्ट बाय द रिडक्शन इन द एक्शन ऑफ द ब्रो डिप्रेसर कॉम्प्लिकेशन इंक्लूड टेम्परेरी टोसिस लैग ऑफ थेलमोस एट्रोपियॉन एंड डिप्लोपिया सो यू नो बोटॉक्स इंजेक्शन इज वेरी कॉमन इट यू नो यू हैव मे हैव हर्ड अबाउट दिस इन केस ऑफ मेनी प्लास्टिक सर्जरीज प्रोसीजर दैट बोटॉक्स हैव बिन डन बट बेसिकली इट इज कॉजिंग द टाइटनिंग ऑफ द स्किन सो वेर एवर द स्किन इज टाइट यू वॉन्ट द स्किन टू बी टाइट एंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज एन आई एंड द क्रो लाइन्स आर एट द लिटरल कैंथस यू कैन सी द रिंकलिंग एट द लिटरल कैंथस प्रोज आर ग्लैबुलर लाइन्स आर बेसिकली बिटवीन द नोज फोरो लाइन्स सो वी इंजेक्ट इन दिस इन दैम बोटॉक्स इज इंजेक्ट in them and it causes the decreasing of these lines but you know botox can also induce ptosis whenever if it is uh, uh, gone to the levator muscle so whenever uh, you do botox uh, make sure you do not uh, uh, in, uh, inject it in the levator muscle other, otherwise it will cause the temporary ptosis it can also cause the ectropion it can also cause diplopia if any muscles is involved tissue filler these are used to address the age related wrinkles and less commonly defect uh, from other causes such as trauma complications include hypersensitivity reactions hyaluronic acid is the most commonly used tissue filler and can be used to temporarily fill in hollows and replace lost volume this is injected deep to the orbicularis and the effect uh, generally lasts for 3 to 12 months depending on the age and use so basically the tissue um, uh fillers are basically used to fill the tissues to so that the lid uh, the skin get tightened up and hyaluronic acid is one of them and its uh, effect generally lasts for 3 to 12 months autologous fat can give some more permanent replacement other include collagen microsphere of calcium hydroxyapatite and synthetic filler skin resurfacing removal of the superficial layer of the skin by chemical peels or laser can lead to the reduction in wrinkling increased evenness or pigmentation removal of blemishes and improved texture by generating new epidermis and increased collagen production in the dermis so you know it is these are all the derma procedures chemical peeling is sometimes done, uh, done in a, to decrease the pigmentation and increase the um, lid tightening uh and improve the texture of the skin so these are uh, non surgical techniques and the other surgical techniques are the upper lid blepharoplasty so basically blepharoplasty is done to remove the loose skin it can also uh, used to remove the fat uh, orbital fat mm. upper lid uh, eyelid involutional changes are characterized by the surplus upper eyelid skin dermatoclases that leads to the baggy lids with indistinct creases and pseudo or mechanical ptosis it may cause a heavy sensation around the eyes bro ache and in more advanced cases obstruction of the visual field upper lid blepharoplasty is effective for the removal of the surplus skin and can be combined with the reduction of the superior orbital fat care must be taken prior to the surgery to look for the ptosis of the eyelid or eyebrow and ocular surface dryness complication include removal of excess skin leading to lack of thelmos corneal drying and removal of excessive uh, uh, fat leading to the unattractive hollowed out uh, upper eyelid sulcus lower lid eyelid blepharoplasty lower lid involutional changes are characterized by excessive skin and or prolapse orbit, orbital fat which can be addressed with blepharoplasty so there are two types anterior approach and posterior approach you know anterior approach is through the skin and the posterior approach is through the conjunctiva anterior approach when there is an excessive skin and anterior approach is used to raise a skin or muscle then uh, flap that can be lifted and redrape onto the lip with some flesh removed at the time the inferior uh, orbital fat uh, pads can be reduced by a small incision through the septum bulging of the lower uh, eyelid uh, posterior approach bulging of the lower eyelid fat pads without eyelid laxity or surplus skin is best reduced by 
posterior tars conjunctival approach complications include lower eyelid retraction contour abnormalities particularly lateral drooping and ectropion so these are all the cases of eyelid retraction a is showing thyroid disease b is showing the myasthenia tosis c is showing the setting sun sign in infantile hydrocephalus and d is showing the parkinson disease and a is showing the severe dermatoclasis causing reduction of the upper visual field b is showing the appearance following surgery a is showing the uh, mild dermatoclasis and excess lower lid skin and b appearance following the upper and lower lid blepharoplasty protosis correction protosis frequently accompanies uh dermatoclasis so brow ptosis is when the excessive skin is present on the uh, brow which is causing the ptosis of the eyelid and may uh, also follows the facial nerve palsy or localized trauma lifting of the brow needs to precede or occasionally be combined with the upper lid blepharoplasty direct brow lift and incision is made above the eyebrow hair uh and ellipse of the skin is removed endoscopic brow lift small incision within a hairline enable endoscopic elevation of the whole for forehead tissue and release at the eyebrow periosteum to allow lifting of the eyebrows through sutures supported on the frontal bone and anchors with the hairline so you can see the a is showing the right brow ptosis and dermatoclosis and following a direct brow lift so what you do is basically you in, uh, um incise the skin portion above the eyebrow and then you suture it and it will cause the lifting of the uh eye so that's it for the uh eyelid part 12 see you in the next lecture